correct is to first find the general solution. That's what we've been doing. General solution has the plus C on the end. But then after that, we're going to find the particular solution that satisfies. This is the extra piece of information. Maybe f of 1 is equal to 0. That's what we haven't been given uh, before now. Okay, so we are told that the derivative of f is equal to 1 over x squared when x is greater than 0. Um, and the reason for that has to do with the particular solution here. Okay, um, but you really don't, this, this piece of information, you don't, don't stress over that too much. Okay, um, that's just restricting the domain. Um, so we need to find big F. We need to take the antiderivative here with respect to x. I can't left off my dx over here. Okay. Anytime you put the integral symbol, you got to have what variable you're taking it with respect to in there. When we take the antiderivative of a derivative, we're just left with the function itself. Now, I'm not going to put plus c on that side. Okay, because that, that's the function notation. I really just have to worry about it on the other side. Now, on the other side, I'm going to look at that as that's x to the negative 2. So when we take the antiderivative, of course, add 1 to the exponent so it becomes negative 1, divide by the new exponent, put our plus c on the end. Now, the negative... Um, we don't leave negative constants in the denominator, or we don't leave the negative in the denominator. We leave the constant, but we don't leave the negative. Uh, and we move the negative exponent to the denominator to make it positive. Okay, so negative 1 over x plus c is our general solution. Okay. The particular solution means we're going to plug in what they give us. Okay, they tell us that f of 1 is equal to 0. So this function is equal to 0 when x is 1. So I'm going to take my general solution and I plug in 0 for f of x and I plug in 1 for x and I'm going to solve for c. So negative 1 divided by 1 is negative 1. Move the 1 over. So 1 is our constant of integration. Remember, that's what we called C. It was the constant of integration. So our particular solution here is f of x is equal to negative 1 over x plus 1. C would have been different if we had been given a different initial condition. Look at another one. Let's look at one involving a square root. Here we are told g prime of x is equal to 2 over the square root of x. And we are told g of 9 is equal to 10. Okay. Um, before I set everything up, I'm going to go ahead and rewrite that expression. I'm going to rewrite 2 over the square root of x as 2x to the negative 1 half, because it was in the denominator, and the square root as an exponent is the 1 half power. So you're going to integrate both sides. I'm going to go ahead and put that constant, that 2, that scalar multiple, I'm just going to put it in front of the integral, okay? Remember, you can do that. It simplifies things a little bit to just kind of set it to the side, and then we can just deal with our power rule, okay? So the left side there would just be big G of X. We took the derivative of a, <coughs> excuse me, we took the antiderivative of a derivative, so we get the original. On the right side, add 1 to the exponent. That becomes positive 1 half. Divide by the new exponent plus c on the end. 
We don't want to leave it like that with a fraction in a fraction. So when we flip it over, we end up getting 2 times 2, which is 4. And let's go ahead and rewrite that as the square root of x. So that is the general solution. Let's plug in our specifics to get our particular solution. So the function is equal to 10 when x is 9. So 10 is equal to 4 times the square root of 9 plus c. The square root of 9 is 3. 4 times 3 is 12. Move that over. Negative 2 is our c. So our particular solution is g of x is equal to 4 times the square root of x minus 2, not under the square root, just on the end. And remember, you can always take the derivative of that to confirm that it's the, uh, the original function in question. Okay? Um, in this case, the exponent is 1 half, so take the derivative, bring down the exponent, 4 times 1 half is 2, subtract 1 from the exponent, that becomes negative 1 half. The derivative of negative 2 is 0, so we do get the original function.